How are we doing? We're doing great. Always good. Uh, another uh, Boston Boston guy. So. Absolutely. Right down the street. Yes. Lovely, lovely. So uh, let's just introduce the product. First of all, we see it here. Briggs Hard Seltzer Pineapple. Tell me, what is the product? Absolutely. So this is a, uh, a hard seltzer. It's made with 100% real fruit. Um, so as you see in the non-alcoholic seltzer space, you've got companies such as Polar, LaCroix. Um, you know, we're using the premium ingredients uh, and making a product that has 100% real fruit, no added sugar, no preservatives. It's naturally gluten-free, and uh, it's got a nice shelf life as well. So this is a product that's uh, not only approachable, but, but high quality. And how did you sort of come about to this? What was the inspiration? Absolutely. So, um, you know, back in high school, my business partner and I, Neil, we've been friends forever. And, um, you know, we've always been interested in the beverage space. And, um, you know, he's done a lot of brewing. I was over at Babs in college, uh, you know, studying entrepreneurship. And, um, you know, about five years ago in 2013, we saw the rise of Spike Seltzer. Um, and this is really before it became the hit that it, it now is. Um, but we saw a great opportunity, uh, an opportunity to enter the premium space of this uh, ever-growing market uh, towards the health-conscious, socially active consumer. And, um, you know, we decided that adding real premium, real fruit ingredients uh, was our way to do that. Yeah, certainly. And uh, you guys mentioned that you use, obviously, real fruit. So this is sort of, this is like an infusion or sort of how, how does that process work? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the base of this product is uh, a flavor neutral cold brew sugar base. The sugar ferments out to no residuals. And what you get is a low calorie, low sugar, naturally gluten free flavor neutral base. And then we just add a little bit of real fruit and that's it. Very simple. Only three ingredients, water, uh, alcohol from cold brewed sugar and fruit juice. That's great. And tell me a little bit about, I mean, now I think you, you mentioned you have three SKUs with pineapple, cran yeah. uh, cranberry, and uh, grapefruit. Yeah. And grapefruit. What was the sort of a, you know, R&D process like? How did you settle on those flavors? What works about them? Sure. So, um, you know, the R&D behind this product was pretty difficult. It's a relatively new space, so there isn't much, uh, you know, written about it as you'd find in, like, beer processes and things like that. Um, but when we first launched, we came up with Briggs Original Boston Cranberry. Um, and we've kind of evolved from that into this, you know, three product skew. We're now Briggs Hard Seltzer. That's the umbrella of the brand. Um, and the three flavors. So cranberry, that was the OG flavor. We stuck with it. Massachusetts roots, local fruit. Um, the grapefruit is something that we've seen uh, has proven very successful amongst our competitors. And we felt that, you know, it'd only be right if we did a real fruit version. And then pineapple. Uh, pineapple is something that we see very popular in the hard cider market. Um, but we feel that we have a very interesting opportunity um, to actually make a pineapple hard seltzer using that real fruit. We cut down the sugar, about 25% of that that you'd find in a hard cider. And it uh, really gives us an awesome opportunity to differentiate ourselves from the competitors and provide the consumers with a unique and uh, tasty product. Absolutely. And, and sort of where do you see this brand uh, sort of working in terms of retail channel, food service, or, or, or really the, the consumer audience? Who are you kind of going for with this? So, you know, the space is still pretty new. Um, right now, like 95 plus percent of our sales are retail stores. So that's both liquor stores and supermarkets. Um, we do very well in the supermarket space, um, you know, because we use those real ingredients. It makes a lot of sense in places like Whole Foods and Wegmans. Um, but again, you know, this space is growing really quickly, and I think that there's a large opportunity in the future to tackle the on-premise as it becomes a more approachable product, and the consumer education continues to rise. And uh, you talked a little bit about differentiation, but if you can sort of expand maybe a little bit about that, I mean, what have you yeah. seen in some of these other companies that, um, that you maybe see you want to do differently or that maybe take a different approach? Absolutely. So um, I'd say one of the main things that we see in our competitors is similarity. Um, the product inside of the can uh, is very similar, and it's kind of a branding competition between our competitors. Um, we've stepped outside of that bubble, and we've actually differentiated ourselves with our products. So our products are unfiltered fruit. Um, you'll find real colors in each of our products. Um, and that really gives us an ability to stand out. We're providing the consumer with something that's premium, no natural flavors, no artificial flavors, no added sugar. Um, and, and the product really speaks for itself in that way. Um, our packaging, we've done our best uh, to really convey that messaging to the consumer. Um, and I think that that really gives us a strategic advantage, especially um, with our competitors fighting for that same space. Yeah, I have to say it is a great looking package. You got a you. lot of cool stuff going on there. Appreciate it. Well, you know, for uh, you know someone like yourself, I think it's great to uh, to just maybe get some of your insight. Um, you know, we have lots of viewers here. A lot of people in the room are very early stage, uh, just trying to get their brands off the brand, off the ground. 
What is maybe something that you've learned in over the past you know, six months to a year that's really you feel is a valuable piece of information for maybe other entrepreneurs in the space? Totally. So you know, to the young entrepreneurs who haven't uh, launched a company yet but are interested and, and are you know, intrigued by the food and beverage space, um, my biggest advice would be um, not only to go for it, because I feel like everybody says go for it, but to be really persistent and to reach out and talk to a ton of people. Um, when we first started this company, you know, I, I was 21 years old. I had never started a company before. I was not a beverage guy. I had no connections. And um, I actually think that that was an advantage for me because I reached out to a lot of people who, if I was you know, older or, or had a lot of other experiences, might not have been so willing to give me the advice that they gave me because I was a rookie at it. Um, and I think that uh, you know, persistence and reaching out to a ton of people and the combination of those two um, will lead you to become confident and feel like you have enough information and enough education to, to really do it right. And I think that that's the, the key that I would give is reach out to a ton of people. You know, if you're a young entrepreneur and you want to talk about a food and beverage company, feel free to reach out to me too. I love talking to people. I'm still, I'm still totally new at this. I'm a rookie still. And um, you know, if you're, you're a step back or two back, I'm happy to help you come up and, and join me up here. That's what we love to hear at BevNet Live. It's all about uh, getting everyone in the room and, and starting that conversation. So totally. thanks so much for joining us and Thank explaining you. a little bit about your brain.